The overall goal of this procedure is to demonstrate techniques for infecting zebrafish larvae using the fungal pathogen Candida albicans. First, a fluorescent fungal culture is prepared and fish embryos are decorinated. Next, the fish are lined up on an agarose injection dish. Candida albicans is micro-injected through the ear of each fish into the hindbrain ventricle. Fish are then embedded in low-melt agarose and visualized by epifluorescence microscopy. Ultimately, this method can be used to non-invasively image the host-pathogen interaction in the complex environment of the host rather than the simplified system of the petri dish. The main advantage of this technique over existing methods like caudal vein injection is that you create a localized infection that results in lethal disseminated disease. Further, this technique allows for efficient injection of the inherently large C. albican cells into small zebrafish larvae. Begin by streaking a Candida albican stock on a yeast peptone dextrose agar plate. Incubate the plate overnight at 37 degrees Celsius to allow colonies to grow. Once the colonies are visible, use a sterile wooden dowel to pick an isolated colony and dissolve the yeast in 5 milliliters of fresh yeast extract peptone dextrose broth in 16 by 150 millimeter culture tubes. Place the culture on a tissue culture roller drum equipped with a test tube wheel and incubate it overnight at 37 degrees Celsius. The next day, transfer one milliliter of the culture to a 1.5 milliliter Eppendorf tube and centrifuge it at 14,000 times G for one minute to pellet the cells. Then discard the supernatant and vortex the pellet to loosen it. Resuspend the cells in 1 ml of PBS, vortex and centrifuge them again. Then, discard the supernatant and repeat this wash step three times to remove any residual culture medium. Once the cells have been washed, count them in a hemocytometer at a 1 to 100 dilution in PBS. For a 12 hour culture, you should expect 3 to 4 times 10 to the 8 cells per milliliter. Resuspend the yeast at a final concentration of 10 to the 7 cells per milliliter. Use a sieve to collect zebrafish embryos from a spawning tank on the day before the injection and store them in an egg water solution containing 60 milligrams per milliliter of instant ocean salts in sterile deionized water. Then, Place the embryos at 33 degrees Celsius for 24 hours with a 12 hour light dark cycle. This permits development of the embryo to the prim 25 larval stage, the optimal stage for infection. The day of the infection, transfer the embryos with a transfer pipette in 60 milliliters of egg water to an extra deep petri dish. Then, use a dissecting microscope and Dumont tweezers to decorinate the embryos. This can be achieved by gently pulling the corian apart like a bag of potato chips until the fish pops out. Once all the embryos have been decorinated, swirl the petri dish to move the fish towards the center, transfer the fish to the lid of the dish, remove the medium, and replace with fresh egg water. Add fish to fresh egg water. Prepare a 200 microgram per milliliter solution of tricane methane sulfonate to anesthetize the fish. Using a transfer pipette, collect 20 to 50 embryos and place them in the anaesthetic solution for one to two minutes or until they stop moving. In the meantime, turn on the injection unit, making sure the pressure switch is on pulse and the pulse duration is set to nine with three PSI for the back pressure unit. Gradually open the valve on the nitrogen tank until the injection pressure reaches 30 PSI. Next, 
Load a pulled micropipette with 5 microliters of Vortex Candida Albican solution and place it in the micropipette holder. Place an extra deep petri dish containing water on the dissecting microscope stage and adjust the micropipette's position until it is in view and its tip is only partially submerged in the water. Then, using tweezers, clip the needle of the pulled pipette about 3 mm from the tip. If the needle has been successfully clipped, pressing the injection unit's foot switch should allow the liquid to be dispensed. Using a graduated slide, measure the volume dispensed. Then, adjust the pressure so that the volume of liquid dispensed is 0.21 mm in diameter, or just under the size of a zebrafish embryo's pupil. Once the microscope is set up and the fish are anesthetized, swirl the dish to draw the fish to the center and take them up into a transfer pipette. Carefully tap the side of the pipette so that the fish settle at the tip. Then, using as little volume as possible, gently deposit the fish onto a larval agarose injection dish pre-warmed to 28 degrees Celsius. Using a smooth glass rod, carefully line the fish up. Then, with a paper towel, remove as much liquid as possible from the dish. Place the agarose dish with fish under the microscope until both the needle and first fish are in clear view. Ensure that each fish is still alive by observing the presence of a visible heartbeat. If it is dead, discard it and move on to the next one. Move the glass needle towards the fish, zooming in as you do so. Then, carefully insert the needle into the fish's ear, a circular structure with two ear stones located just behind the eye. Once the needle is in position, inject the yeast using the foot switch. If the needle is correctly inserted, the fish's hindbrain ventricle will swell slightly. After the injection, retract the needle and repeat the procedure with the next fish. The whole process should take no longer than 15 or 20 minutes or the fish will dry out and die. After this time, the yeast will also settle into the bottom of the micropipette and lead to uneven infection doses and or clogging of the pulled micropipette. Once all the fish have been injected, use egg water to wash them off the agarose and into a fresh petri dish containing 60 milliliters of egg water. Then, place the dish at 28 degrees Celsius. Close the nitrogen valve, set the injection switch to continuous to relieve pressure in the tank line. Then, when the pressure falls to zero, set the switch back to pulse and turn off the injection unit. Begin by anesthetizing the infected fish in tricane methane sulfate, as described earlier. Once the fish are anesthetized, use a pipette to transfer one fish at a time into a petri dish containing 0.4% low melt agar. Then, using a transfer pipette and carrying over as little agarose as possible, transfer each fish from the petri dish into one well of a glass bottom imaging dish. Add approximately 0.2 milliliters of 0.4% low melt agarose supplemented with 200 micrograms per milliliter of anesthetic on top of the fish so that the inner circles are filled and a thin layer of agarose spreads across the bottom of the well. The fish can now be imaged for up to 24 hours using an inverted microscope with a laser scanning confocal system. Five hours after infecting zebrafish with red fluorescent Candida albicans, the yeast is visible in the fish's hindbrain. In FLI1 EGFP fish such as these, the vascular endothelium and macrophage-like cells throughout the fish's body are fluorescent. They are shown here in green. Five hours after infection, the yeast can be seen within macrophage-like cells. By 24 hours, the infection has disseminated along the dorsal tail tissue. 
where the yeast can again be detected within phagocytic cells. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how to microinject Candida albicans into the hindbrain ventricle of PRIM25 stage zebrafish, including 1. Preparing the fungal culture, 2. Anesthetizing zebrafish larvae, 3. Microinjecting into the hindbrain ventricle, and 4. Preparing infected larvae for confocal imaging.